I can't imagine why. Oh, they wrote it and sang to each other. And she even told me about it. Yeah, it was beautiful. Yeah. Well, Mark, you know what you got to look forward to now. Your mother's going to be sitting there crying when you get married. He knows that. He knows that. Probably worse than she is. We're going to break the record. Oh, yeah. Hey Wilbur, hold up your plate so everybody can see how much you ate. Ah, oh, come on now, just wait and put the rest of it. Matt Goss, he's a, a singer this year. We all three go to church. I'll have a long speech prepared. No, actually, what I brought was with me was some notes on things that happened in the last year. And uh, what I thought I'd do is just recap some events, different things that have happened to us. And uh, that will give you a feeling of where we've come from and where we are now. I've made a little a few notes along the way as, as things have been happened to us this year. So I do have a few. Okay. Uh, first in, in First thing I've got that I had listed down was uh, in January 11th uh, was a Steve Green concert at First Baptist Chickasaw. We had promoted that concert pretty heavily. We're real pleased that uh, the, uh, the congregation the church was packed out. In fact, they uh, broke some fireplaces. Come on in. Come, Come on in. in. <laughs> you can be part of it. <laughs> It was on the 19th that uh, Steve Williams discovered some vandalism at a transmit by someone who knew how, to, how not to cut us off the air. And we knew then that somebody thought we were doing something good. In February, uh, Dad, of course, attended the NRB, and also we got a new control board in. In March, um, I'm not sure about this, but I, I know Rodney began in March. Rodney, our salesman, who isn't here tonight, he and, yeah. he and Andrea, uh, if you don't know, uh, had to go off upstate because of her aunt dying, so they couldn't be here. But uh, I believe it was in March that Rodney started, and I'm not sure whether Robert started in or not. It's in April. It's in April? Okay. Well, we'll, 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 we'll get pretty close. Uh, it also is in March. I had a black fellow. Uh, call, I, I, I don't know why I wrote this down, but he said that his boss, he, he um, liked to li listen to us at work, but his boss kept turning us off, usually because he heard something he didn't like on Bob Larson. <laughs> 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 but he said he kept turning back on us so, so I thought that was a good sign, something good was happening. <laughs> but in, April, in April, we began uh, Dr. James Kennedy, we started his program. And also on April 20th, uh, well, the Friday before that, we didn't have enough money for payroll. And uh, that Monday, which was the day to pay everybody, uh, we had we uh, had enough come in to uh, not only pay everybody, but also to pay some other bills, too. That's neat. That's great. Unfortunately, that has happened many times. <laughs> <laughs> but, That's true. But the Lord has been faithful. I mean, yeah, the Lord has been faithful. came down every day. Right. Um, then it's also in April, we had a guy who's working for the company that owns the land our transmitters on call us and ask if, um, if it would hurt anything if uh, water got on our radios while well, he's working. Of course, uh, that only helps the signal, so we said, that's okay. <laughs> and, uh, but he was nice to call. Also, it was in April that we found that the uh, bank that holds our mortgage, First South, uh, wouldn't loan us ten, uh, money for the 10,000-watt transmitter which left us not knowing how to put on the 10,000 watts. In uh, May, we uh, began uh, Bob Larson's fundraising. We began telling people that we needed financial support for it. We had a great response, however, 
uh, we found a large number of those people did not follow through later on. On May 26th, uh, Dave Getz says that he will finance our transmitter. And so we were able to get on the 10,000 watts as a result. In June, uh, we started the Heartbeat on Saturday, and we also started uh, uh, Gene's Sunday program, Gospel is Your Delay, of Southern Gospel. On Saturday. <laughs> it started what? on Saturday. On Saturday. And we moved it to Sunday. Oh, that's right, that's right. That's right. Keep right. straight. Really. <laughs> you, you got to be technical, don't that's you? That's true. we got to be technical, right. On June, June 7th, the lady called, and she said that she enjoys the station and it helped her lead three teens who live across the street from her to the door. And uh, she said uh, they like Bob Larson and Hartley. On uh, June 8th, our 10,000 watt transmitter arrived. On, uh, then we skipped to July. Uh, that's when um, uh, we were able to stay in. On July 11th, we found out that uh, uh, the CIE in Lakeland decided not to uh, have deposition hearings, which meant we were able to keep our application of it the FM in, in the FCC. Which, uh, had we, of course, had to pull out at that time, we would never receive what we received for pulling out. Also in July, we had uh, John McArthur, he started. And then on July 16th, it rained on a new transmitter. It had it been turned on, uh, Steve Briggs Water said pulling. that we would have probably lost it. <laughs> so fortunately, we were not on the air on it. However, by the end of July, we got it on the air. In August, I believe Debbie, you can't start coming in in August. Started in June, and then surgery was out for a month. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It goes fast when you have a Boy, it's <laughs> Uh, I wrote this one down. On August 7th, I had a young black man call me and said, Is this the station that blesses me with Bob Larson? <laughs> <laughs> I, I didn't know what was going on. He went on like that, I mean, like five minutes before I got a word in. <laughs> I think he liked it. He <laughs> pulled that right on to Bob, didn't he? Uh, in uh, September the 8th, uh, we started the Charter Connection. September 8th, we had the very first one. And it went great, everybody was pleased with it, and a lot of people have been helped as a result. Um, also in September, Andrea started with us. And uh, September 27th, uh, we then signed papers to pull out of our FM application, and by doing so, we have received a buyout that hopefully will keep us on the air for a while. Uh, in, in November, we began uh, mentioning daily those people who contributed to Bob Larson. And this has been a significant change for us because, as a result, by the end of November, November 28th, we passed a $3,000 mark in contributions for the first time, which was the best time, you know, best we'd ever had. We never got anything like that. So obviously, it was, it was a good move. And then in December here this month, we got the new production board in. Uh, we, uh, oh, uh, the first of December, I had a guy call, and he told me that, uh, he had this new Christian he was discipling, and the guy said he was doing good, except, uh, you know, he, he, he did good when he got to church and all, but during the week he was having trouble. So uh, this fellow told him, he said, listen, I want you to do two things. I want you to carry your Bible with you everywhere you go, and secondly, I want you to turn your radio dial on WBHY and don't change it <laughs> for two weeks. I want you to do that. And so the guy did that, and, and he came back to him and said, it works. <laughs> <laughs> Started getting a little carnal that uh, uh, you know something would come on the radio or something, or he'd read something in his Bible that would draw him right back. That's that was it. I like hearing that. On December the 6th, we got the sad news that Dr. McGee had died, but fortunately his program will continue. Then on the 15th, uh, good news, First South decided to renew our, our loan so we could stay in business. And, uh, uh, and also they told us we didn't have to pay interest twice this month. Help us out. Get the month, so. That was an answer to prayer. Real <laughs> yeah. answer to prayer. Yeah, yeah we didn't know what that would be. dollars each time. Yeah, we don't quite have it. So, now, you know, all those events, even though some of them have to do with people, most of them don't. Most of them are events that's happened to us. But I got to thinking, you know, the, the, um, the thing that tells us whether we're really doing anything or not, I think, is whether people are responding. And so what? And I got to thinking, well, I can pull out. So, you know, the most moving letters we've had this year or something. But I thought, well, no, you're doing no better than you are now. So 
I pulled out some others that we've got in the last week, and here are just some excerpts from them. Uh, one guy wrote last week uh, on the 12th, we got the letter, and he said, I've never found a Christian radio station that I enjoyed listening to all day. Some would have one or two programs that I would, I would enjoy. Since WBHY, I keep my radio on WBHY all the time, at the office and in my car. A lady, a lady wrote to us and said, I have an invalid neighbor to whom I have recommended your station. I fear he is not a Christian. I am playing, I'm praying for him to find the Lord. So there's somebody who's using our station as a witnessing to him. And then uh, somebody wrote to us and said, thanks for being there. WBHY has truly blessed me this year. I thank God for you all. Merry Christmas and Happy New Year. I got that on the 19th. Uh, just a couple of days ago, and apparently, in, in that sense, you've been a companion to me. Today, we got this letter. Bob Larson's program has been the best thing that has happened in my life in the past few months. Uh, I have become a Bob Larson addict. <laughs> Sounds like I'm killing you, I guess. I, at 1 o'clock every day, put my earphone in my ear, and I am at work during this time. If you, and for an hour and a half, I am tuned out to everything around, sometimes even my balls. <laughs> I have shouted praise the Lord with him, and I have cried buckets of tears. I have prayed with him. And so, you know, I think that's representative of a lot of people who have been affected by it. And Steve, uh, you might want to mention the idea that we found out that five convicts were converted in the Hold, the Holman Holman President and Atmore as a result of the Bob Larson program. Yes, uh, we've heard that, they, that Bob Larson played a significant role in their lives, so we know we're, we're getting into reaching people in prison. And even today, you know, there's a fellow in the jail that listens to us and has the station's been a lot to him. Don't forget to tell him the ship, our ship came in today. <laughs> nobody does that to you. Why, stealing my thunder. <laughs> So I, I hope, you know, there is y'all come by the station and get a chance to see it because, I mean, you can tell it's, he put a lot of work in it. And uh, they, uh, they said the lady that brought by said that they don't have much to work with them. They don't give them tools to work with because they don't trust them in jail. And so uh, the materials he had to work with were sparingly. But he obviously put a lot of love in it. And, and he was wanting to give us something that he did. And, uh, he wrote a note, too, with it in part. It says, God bless you for the uh, word. I receive from you each day. I'm listening to your station while I'm writing this note. And of course, we receive a lot of encouraging letters from him. He says, We will be in court tomorrow morning. The Lord will be with me, and I will accept whatever is in his will. And uh, so, if we can be encouraged with people like that, I think we're, we're moving in the right direction. Um, is he a prisoner that, that made a sh shift for you or something? Like yes, that along the way. How did, I forgot how we first got in contact with him. Well, he uh, started listening to the station, and then he, he called the station. You know, they don't have any money up there. He called to collect, and I took the call. I don't normally take it except to collect calls. <laughs> but, but, well, anyway. It was right in Mobile. Yeah. yeah, it turns out he's in the Mobile County Jail, and he's in for uh, bad checks. And I don't know what else that might be involved, but he's a Christian now, and uh, I don't know exactly what happened related to his conversion, but I know that. I do know that Emmett Filia, the mm -hmm. prison mm -hmm. minister, has been dealing with him, and he's been listening to the radio station continuously. And he's been writing back or calling and telling me about various things that he hears on the air, so I know he's not thanking yeah. me very much. Yeah. Uh, we didn't have one of the programs on Sunday morning at the regular scheduled time, and he called me and told me about it. You know what happened? <laughs> <laughs> he also called in the Charter Connection one time. Did he? Yeah, he did. At the end of the program. At the end of the program. Wow. Well, it was the last call in the morning. Well, uh, his letters and others like them have indicated that the station is making a difference in people's lives. Uh, and I think we ought to remember it in prayer, too, uh, for him coming up for uh, uh, judge tomorrow. Or, as he said, uh, uh, in, you know, even though we get these letters, there's a lot of things we don't know about. For instance, the Charter Connection. Uh, Jim Hendrick told me last week that they had, that they're cutting back things at uh, Charter, but yet the Christian Counseling Center is increasing what it's doing, apparently as a direct result of a program. He said, in fact, uh, Allison 
works there as Jim's secretary tell me that whenever once Thursday afternoon hits when that program goes on, they are inundated for the next you know day and a half there following up with, with whatever they get. So apparently they have had a lot of referrals of COVID. And so we don't have any letters from those people. So we know that things are happening through that program as well. So there's a lot of things you won't hear about, even though we do have these. And because of that, it makes me think of something that um, we need to keep in mind, and that is that uh, there are two things we need to keep in mind. First of all, is that, is that we really have, we have, to, need to have a sense of faith that even though we don't always see the results, that when we get, put God's Word out there and do something with it, that uh, it will come back and uh, we probably won't know until heaven what all effect it will have, but yet we, uh, we put it out there with, with a sense of faith, knowing that the Lord will use it. Uh, but at the same time, there's another thing we must keep in mind, and that is our dependence on Him. The very fact that we don't have immediate results from what we're seeing, and we can't always tell what's happening, we have to be very careful that we don't um, uh, get complacent about what we're doing. Because that means, rather than getting a, a head count to tell how well we're doing or something, we have to really look to the Lord to open our eyes to deficiencies in what we're doing, or good things in what we're doing, to increase that, because uh, he will have to directly tell us, because a lot of times we won't be able to get the feedback that will let us know. So on the one hand, we have a real sense of faith, on the other hand, a real sense of our dependency on him to know what's going on. Um, and uh, really, the truth of uh, the matter is, I think that if anything good is going on, we know it's because of Him. And uh, if anything, I guess you could say that if we're doing anything, it's probably just getting in His way. Uh, and I think we need to keep that sense of uh, dependency on Him for everything that's good. Uh, everything good that just happened. We have a choice here to either, we don't have everything we want, obviously. I mean, we have a lot of needs, a lot of things we like, but the Lord hasn't provided them. And yet, He has provided so much. And we can either focus in on what He has provided, or else focus in on what we don't have. I hope we can focus on the things we don't have. And when I say us, I want to emphasize that it is us. It is a team effort. Everybody that's involved in the station has a different role, but without which uh, we would be, we'd have a problem. It is really a, no, nobody could do it alone. Nobody could accomplish what we're doing. Themselves. So it's real team, a team effort and a necessity. And I think that's how God would have it, a real uh, working together. Can I get y'all on that? <laughs> <laughs> we'll be I think, we'll I be think we're satisfied. Yeah. We're satisfied. yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but uh, when I say team effort, I don't just mean the employees are, and you know, I mean also the spouses and families, because when somebody sacrifices to help, uh, also, their family has to sacrifice as well, and so uh, that involves a, a, a full effort on a lot of people's part that we don't even see. So I, I think we need to recognize that as well. Um, I guess in summation, I could just say this: that uh, yeah, looking back over the year and, and the things that have happened to us, we made progress. Perhaps the most significant one going up to 2,000 months, so more people can hear us and, and hear the gospel. But um, uh, in summation, the one thing that says it all is that we've been blessed by God. And, uh, at this time of the year, that's the kind of thing that um, stands out. Thank you for what God has done for us in His Son. Uh, and He's blessed the uh, uh, world in that way. And we can look over our year and say the same thing. He's continued to bless us in our lives. And uh, I think we ought to take a, a couple of minutes and acknowledge that fact. And, uh, well, I think we ought to just take a moment to pray. Father, we come before you now. Gather together because of you. Lord, if, it, if, we, if this weren't true, we have to be off doing other things. But because we know it to be true, we work together, we seek to proclaim your truth. Father, we want to thank you now for 
hearts sitting inside, the body inside. And Lord, we want to thank you, especially now, for the opportunity you've given us through the means of radio. It's one way among many. Lord, it's the way you've given us. You brought together a unique set of circumstances to allow us to speak to a lot of people. And tell them how good you are, how great you are, how much you care, and what you do. Lord, thank you for the opportunity to brag on you. Father, thank you for each one here and those who couldn't be here. For their part in this, for allowing you to use them. Lord, it, it should be that way. It should be a team effort because that's how your body is to function. Every part is important. It's in obedience to you. Father, we want to be in your will. We want to walk in a way that would be honoring you, pleasing you. And Father, we pray that we have this year. If we have it in any way, Lord, open our eyes to it. Father, if we have, Lord, encourage us to continue. Father, in this coming year of 1989, oh Lord, we want so much to be used in you. We want those who are lost. And we want those who are Christians listening to the station to be encouraged and strengthened because of what they hear. For those who've gone away from you to be convicted and those who need help who are hurting, Lord, may they hear that message of hope and draw us them back. Father, most of all, may we be sincere and real. Father, may it not be a game or a put on or a business. Father, may it be a ministry of real, sincere, heartfelt sharing. Lord, help us to keep our motives pure, our hearts right for you, that you might use us. Lord, you can use a humble heart, but you can't use the crowd. Lord, we don't want to be that way. We want to be humble and dependent on you, for we are. You're in control, and Lord, whatever happens, whatever's ahead, be it good or bad, Lord, we'll accept it from your hand. And we'll use everything we have, your glory, whatever you give us. Lord, we are willing servants. Father, be with Andrea and Rodney right now as they're off with their, their aunt who had her funeral. Be with their family this time. Lord, be with Steve Riggs as his daughter. And be with this prisoner as he comes to the judge. Father, I pray that you would meet all the needs that are here. There are hurts probably here tonight. There are, there are joys here as well. Father, I pray that you would heal those hurts. You would be sufficient in times of trial. And also I pray that if there are joys, Lord, that you would share them and encourage them. May there be a spirit of unity and love that the world might see that you're real and that you have changed our lives. Not only on the air do we display it, but we want to display it behind the scenes. Off the air. So thank you. Thank you for what you're going to do and what you've done. Lord, it's exciting to be a part of your work. So Father, open our eyes to what you have us to do presenting the gospel and working for your glory. Right, in all our ways, acknowledge you. Do these things in Jesus' name. Good job. Well, I just want to thank everybody for being here tonight and the part that each one of you have in the radio station. It's very important. Every part and every function of the station. We uh, just appreciate everything you've done.
Yeah, so they put me yeah. in that front row, didn't they? Yeah. Oh, yeah. uh, you can see you every time. Yeah, every time. <laughs> he, he did that, you know, on purpose. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's a real ham. <laughs> <laughs> That's all right. Uh, who wants my autograph? <laughs> Steve, did Allison tell us that somebody was wanting Jim Hendrix's autograph down the hall that day? I bet you did. I didn't hear that one. Yeah. She, she said, said he's becoming a real celebrity. Somebody wanted his autograph. Oh, yeah, that's right. That's right. She did tell us. Uh, at the hospital, yeah. Oh, boy. Yeah. He's getting the big head, too. David, did you get to get to uh, church service? No, we didn't. I was telling you that Mark had to work six to six, six at night to six in the morning. And uh, whenever he works on those shifts, I don't sleep either. So it was, we were songed out. I, I hated that. Though. I know it was yeah. beautiful. It was good. Yeah. Steve did a good job. I bet he did. Steve. He's slightly coarse. Steve who? Slightly, right? Yeah. <laughs> That's a crazy looking time on it. Hey, Debbie, if you're listening at nine o'clock Saturday morning, you can hear it all. It's going to be on the program. Nine o'clock, Saturday morning. Oh. It's gonna, it's gonna be, it's gonna be the title to your program. So that's what they're gonna have. Robert plays the right tape. Yeah. Robert, you gonna play the right tape Saturday morning? Robert, I will. If Robert plays the right tape, it'll be on. Robert, 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 yeah. So if you don't go over right, blame him. He's, he's unusually hot. He's unusually hot. We go over. Yeah, we're not used to this. We don't have to worry about him. The guy's still sticking out. Come on, Tom. Come in. If that youth choir comes on instead of the program, we'll know Robert. No, Robert. He sings in the youth choir. We appreciate that. Yeah. Can I get y'all anything other than her one coffee? One Pepsi. Thank you, Brent. One Pepsi, one coffee. Thank you. Okay, I'll be back. Thank you. Just see how it goes. You might get out tonight. Just a little bit. Just to do your head. Just get the whole room. We'll get the dessert. Just get the picture of the dessert. Tell one of your jokes. 
Jewish jokes. I'm trying to think of Tell us what the nose is. Do you think air is free? This is a